Hello there, welcome to Craft with Fee and welcome to another tag video. So we're doing four tags in four days to take us right up to the end of the month. And of course we're popping those tags inside a gorgeous little gift box that we made earlier uh, in the month. So today we're going to be doing one which is going to be using a watercolour technique. So this is the, this is the sorry, colour I was going to say, this is the tag that we are making today. So of course we are using the Harvest Meadow suite of products for this. Um, you'll find those in the mini catalogue. This runs right through to uh, the end of December, maybe a couple of days into January. No, the end of December. So um, a beautiful suite of products. As you know, I've been using it all month. Um, totally in love with it, especially this particular stamp here. So we're going to be using today, we're going to be using a blender pen you'll find those on page 129 in the catalog and we're also going to be using some of the watercolor pencils which you will find on page 126 now the watercolor pencils come in two different sets there's assortment number one which has 13 pencils and then assortment number two which has 10 pencils um, they're really quite reasonable when you compare them to other watercolor pencils on the market and they're really good I love them love using them beautiful soft lead in them they blend really beautifully uh, so I'm going to show you what I use those, well, one of the techniques that I use those for. I do use them quite a bit. I find them addictive because they're so easy to use. Okay, so I have gone ahead and made the base of the tag already because we're going to be doing a little bit of colouring. I don't want these videos to drag out too long. So I have used, as with the other ones, I've used a, a Stitch So Sweetly rectangle for my tag. I've also used um, a layering oval in the designer series paper to match and I popped a hole in the top there. So what we're going to do together is we are going to stamp the image onto a piece of basic white and then we are going to just stamp it. Make sure I've got it. It inked up properly, I don't know that I have. There we go, it looks a bit better. Okay, so I should say that I am using soft suede. I like these uh, brownie tones often when I'm colouring. Um, you sort of get more of an invisible line, especially if you use crumb cake, uh, but this one I sort of really really like. Now I like to give that a couple of seconds just to dry off. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. But let me just run through the pencils while we're doing that. So I am going to be using two greens. I'm using Old Olive and Granny Apple Green. So that's my two greens. I'm using Daffodil Delight and Crushed Curry for uh, my two yellowy orangey colours. And then I'm using two colours just to blend. I'm using Basic Grey and Early Espresso. Um, and as I mentioned, they've got lovely soft leads, so they do um, colour up really easily. Now let me just stand up, excuse my dog barking there, um, and I'll just see if I can zoom in a bit. Here we go. So I'll just colour with it zoomed in so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to start off with the darker one of the two um, yellows and this is crushed curry so I'm going to start up here by doing a little bit of darkened color now you don't need to worry too much uh, about making sure that you've colored every tiny little bit of the white because when you use the blender pen on it it will pick up quite a bit of the color and move it around the page so you can spread it out a little Okay, so I'm just doing the base of that top of the flower where the colour would be more dark on the actual plant itself and then just out from the centre I'm just doing a little bit of crushed curry there like that. And then we'll do the same up through here. And there we go. So then we're going to come in with the Daffodil Delight and I like to do it sort of circular motion just to make sure that I'm not going over the edges too much. And you'll see that I'm not going down right down into the edges of the plant because the blender pen will do that for me. I'm just popping a bit of colour down where I want it 
and I'm not being too fussy so hopefully you can see that on camera and then I'm just going to come in here and just move a bit of the colour into the edge of the plant and then we'll do the same down through here So this is a really lovely technique. As I said, I find it very, very addictive. Sometimes when I want to sit and watch YouTube videos or just to chill, I'll stamp a whole heap of these images of all different types, go through my stamp sets, stamp a heap of images, and then I'll just sit and colour because it's just so rewarding. Okay, we might do the stems next. So the stems, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go down just one side with my early espresso. So that I'm not being too fussed and then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to use the grey down the other side. Now of course we're doing this in autumn tones. You could of course do your stems green but I'm not doing that. Okay so we're going to come in with the darker green which is the old olive. Same thing I'm just going to do an edge of the leaf, leaves. Just like that, just one side of them. And then I'm going to come in with the green apple green, which is quite a bright green. But it will all blend together beautifully. And that is the magic of these gorgeous pencils. I love them. Love them to bits. Okay, so that's it. So now we're going to grab a blender pen. So I like to just go onto the side of my paper there and make sure I have a clean tip. That's how you clean it, onto some clean paper. And then I'll blend just the one colour. So I'm going to blend the flowers to begin with. And hopefully you can see there that that has just melded those colours together beautifully. So you're using it as you would a paintbrush to drag your colour. And hopefully you can see the difference there between the blended side of that plant, which a flower, uh, to the side that's not blended. Oh my gosh, sorry. Rocky tends to... Rocky's a bull mastiff. And he is um, the biggest baby you've ever seen. But uh, if you were to come into the backyard... He would check you out and then just probably lick you to death. But he tends to think that the whole neighbourhood is his to watch over. And so anything that moves or <laughs> he just, you know, lets out a big bellow, which is probably enough to scare people off. Uh, but the beauty of the bull mastiff is that they do protect their property and they do protect their owners. So, but he's just a big baby. Oh, gosh, I've gone over the edge there. Just a big, big baby. Okay, I might see if my, I haven't tried before because I normally concentrate better than this. Um, I might see if my colour lifter, which is a blender pen, will lift that up. But it won't matter too much. I'm not going to fuss about it. But there you go. So now what we do, because we've done all of our yellow and orange together, now we're going to go off to the side and we're just going to clean our tip. You see, until it runs clear again. And then we can come in and do our next colour blending. Now, of course, if you don't do that, you're going to bring some of the yellow with you. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But, of course, uh, that's not really ideal because you want, you want it all to look separate. We'll clean that off again and then we'll come in and we'll do the green. So what you're getting is a painted look. And unlike with our blender... Um, markers you aren't getting the alcohol going through to the other side and they are a little easier to use I believe so there you go so that now is our little painted stamped image so I'm just I always clean off my blender pen before I um, put it away now of course the blender pens do have two ends there um, and they come in a pack of three so they're very very economical and very good okay so I'm just going to grab my stamp and blend um color lifter yes it's color lifter and i'll just see if it works to bring up that color there you 
just let it sit there for a minute. It sometimes takes a little bit to work. And I think it is going to work. I think it's going to make it lighter. So that's good. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is bring in our little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm going to chop that down a little bit because we only have a three inch bed on this machine. So if we put anything in wider, it's not going to fit. So I just like to chop them down a little bit, pop in our plates. Okay, so we've got the die, which is the matching die that goes with this beautiful stamp set. You all know how addicted to it I am. Love it. And we're going to use our sticky notes just to hold, hold it in place. Make sure we get it all lined up so that it is going to cut it out perfectly. Okay. Pop our plate over the top to hold them all together and then I'll run it through. Now let me just stand up and go back out so that you can see what I'm doing. Should have done that prior, sorry about that. Okay, I'll just run this through. Lift off our sticky notes and our die. And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning. Very happy with that. So what we're going to do is just glue it down. So I just glued it flat. You can, of course, pop some dimension onto it if you wish. Um, that's up to you. So we're just going to a bit of wet glue so I'll just like to on these skinny bits this is, this is not too skinny not to use this glue it's fine but I just dab just pop little dabs we don't want it spilling out too much over the edges okay so the reason we've got our hole in first is so that we can see where it's going to be so we can lay our flower down in the right spot and then I just like to press down with my fingers, just like that. And then for a finishing touch, I like to then go over with a little bit of Wink of Stella and I've just popped that onto the tops of those flowers and it gives it such a beautiful glimmer. Now Wink of Stella is always traditionally very difficult to come up on camera so I don't know if you can actually see it but Believe me, in real life it looks amazing. It really does. So then I'll go over the flowers as well. And just give it all that little bit of sparkle. It really does lift it. It's beautiful. Stunning. So all we've got left to do now is to pop a bit of ribbon on. So I used that black and white gingham ribbon for... Uh, for the other one so we might use this one which is from the flowers for every season it's the just jade three eighths of an inch gingham it comes in a pack of two you also get a white twill with that as well which you can color so a really pretty ribbon uh, but as I mentioned last time um, I want to give my tags just a slight because I'm making them the same just a slight bit of difference so that uh, they can choose which one to use. Okay, so don't make the mistake of pulling it too tight like I did the other day because it's just cardboard, so just be careful with that. And then we're just going to use my good Stampin' Up! scissors because those ones are too blunt. And then we're just going to trim those off. And there we go. So we have another beautiful tag. And I've, hopefully I've taught you how to... Uh, use the watercolour pencils. You can see that this one here that I've done is a little bit lighter. This one I've got a little bit darker, but it's up to you how much pressure you use on those pencils. As I mentioned, they do have a beautiful soft lead, so they're very easy to use, very easy to sharpen in a normal pencil sharpener, and they will last you for a long, long time because you hardly use any of it at all. So they're a really good addition to um, your stash. 
Anyway, don't forget that it's almost the end of September, which means that if you want to qualify for some free celebration um, items, you've only got until then, um, and then it's all over. So, um, yeah, if that's if there's something in there that you've been eyeing off, don't leave it any later because after the 30th of September, it's all gone. Okay, I'll catch you for video number four. Bye.